All right, gang, here we are now. We're on our way out of the harbor. Before we get out there and start flying this thing, we're just gonna go over our tackle real quick with you. What we prefer to use, because of the fact that none of the line ever touches the water. So what we found is that flying 200 pound braided line is the heaviest line you can get away with. I would fly cable if I could get it to fly, but a cable won't fly, so we can't use cable. Why is that, Captain Dave? Because everybody just wants to see the picture of you holding the fish up by the tail. Nobody really cares that it took you five hours, 10 hours, 12 hours to fight the fish. All they wanna do is see you holding it up by the tail. So we're gonna use a 130 wide, because that's the largest reel made. That's the largest production reel made. So we're using a 130 wide. We're using 200 pound braid. This braided line is 200 pound. It's 200 pound braid tied straight to 400 pound fluoro to the yummy flyer. We're not using any leader. The leader is, the only leader we got is approximately five feet long and it's coming off the swivel, off the 200 pound, straight to the yummy flyer. Like I said, we use cable if we can. Why can we get away with using 400 pound? Because the line never touches the water. If this line, when it's flying on the kite, is in the water, it's not fishing. You're not doing it right. This yummy has to be actually skipping on the surface, going from wing to wing back there, fluttering on the surface from wing to wing. You do not want it flying through the air. Contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think that this thing needs to fly. No, this thing needs to be on the water, touching the water, going from wing to wing across the surface of the water. And also, you have to constantly be adjusting it when you turn. Someone has to be on the kite rod, someone has to be on this reel, letting the line out, winding it in. It's a constant battle to make sure that this yummy's in the water, skipping across the surface, not dragging underwater, are not flying through the air. The key is to have this thing on the surface of the water, fluttering back and forth. The heavier the line, the better. I know a lot of you don't have a 130. That's okay, you can get away with, I would never use smaller than a 50 wide, ever. There's no reason to when you're flying the kite. You wanna use the heaviest line you can. If I had a 50 wide or a 80 wide, I would put 130 pound, 130 pound braided line on it because of the fact that it never touches the water. So you do not want to go light. These fish weigh 150 pounds up to 400 pounds. You do not want to be caught with light line on the kite. There's no reason for it. They will bite the rope because all they're doing is reacting to the rubber flying fish. They're not, the line's never going to come in play. They're never going to see it. That's why you can get away with super heavy line. Okay, gang, so here we are. We're just outside the harbor here. We're just gonna show you how to deploy the kite. So we showed you how to rig it up. Now it's hooked up. So Mike's gonna take it from here. He's gonna explain to you what he does every single day to get this whole mess out into the ocean. <laughs> here we go, Mike. All right, you guys, here we are. We're launching the kite. Three things to remember when you're launching the kite. You gotta do it the same way every time. So you let the kite out first, and get it out to the swivel. In different wind conditions, this might rip out really fast. You might need to engage a little more of your lever drag if you're fishing in high wind conditions. We're going to get it out there. It's that swivel. When you hit the swivel, you see that the clip's gone? We're going to reel it down. We've got the kite and the rod holder. We like to use a safety harness on our kite because I've seen it fly out of the rod holder multiple times, so you need to keep this secure. But for these purposes, we're just going to fly it right out of the rod holder. Come over to our big rod here. Go ahead and throw it in freeze pool. Peel out your line. I like to take the yummy flyer. I have to put it on the back of my reel. Same thing every time. You can see our three ounce weight, counterweight to keep the nose down. We come up to the swivel, we find our kite ring. Kite ring always has to go in front of the swivel. Some swivels will have different sizes and this could fall over the ring. We like one just a little bit smaller. So it stays and we use a rubber band and we'll get to that shortly. So we're gonna take this rubber band, come over to the kite clip. And we attach the rubber band to the kite clip. So once all right, again, so important with our kite clip, we like to tighten our clip all the way up because we don't want any breaks when we're letting out the gummy flyer. Wind conditions change throughout the day. Different tacks call for different strategies. So we have the clip all the way tightened up. If we get a bite, that, that bluefin will break this rubber band. You will be free. Instantly. Instant break. Now, we 
We have our kite tightened up. We're letting out the line slowly. All right, you guys. You can see we have our swivel at the kite clip. It is holding the swivel right there. So as soon as I let that kite line go, that swivel will carry up towards the kite. So since we fly this thing so far behind the boat, if you don't have a pair of good gyros or sunglasses, it's really hard to see this bait. So we like to attach a red balloon or a trash bag or something to see this line. We call it a marker. So the way I do it, there's many ways to do it. I have all my, I have all my line right here. I'm gonna peel out maybe 20 to 30 feet of line off the Makaira and neatly stack it on the deck. About nine poles, 10 poles. I'm gonna take this balloon, blow it up. And when I tie it around this line, I'm going to double knot this balloon so it does not slide down the line. For some reason, if your, bait, your balloon goes in the water off a crazy tack, you want this to stay put. So if this falls down the line, it will go down to your yummy flyer and mess up your whole presentation. So here we go. I have my balloon, I have my line stacked on the deck. I'm gonna go over here, slowly let out my kite while I'm letting out the line of the yummy flyer. So if the kite's going out, your yummy flyer's going out. Reach the point we're at the end here. Go ahead and grab my yummy flyer. I continue to let the kite out. And there she goes. She's wet. So continue, continue to let the kite out while letting the retire out. As you can see, that balloon is marking where my bait will be. The bait comes up. I let the kite out more. Here's me pulling the kite. If you do not let the 130 out at the same time, it will start pulling your bait out of the water like that. So I let out some on the 130. So you give some and you take some. I let out some kite, I let out some 130. I let out some kite, I let out some 130. So I'm letting this all out at the same time here. Now back to communication. The balloon's straight behind the boat. You talk to your captain, you talk to him before you start yelling from the cockpit. Say, Dave, we're right behind the boat. Okay, give me a tack. As we tack, the wind's gonna come in a different direction and it might pull your yummy flyer out of the water. And if it does that, you need to be down here watching it. A good pair of sunglasses and a pair of binoculars to see where your bait's at at all times. Because you never know when those fish are gonna come take a bite. So here we go, we're making the tack. The balloon is gonna kick outside the wake. And I'm gonna continue to let this out farther back. We know those bluefin do not like getting close to the boat sometimes. So again, we're going slowly. Do everything slow when you're starting to do this. There's no need to let the kite out too fast. If you let it out too fast, it's gonna get tangled up. Your yummy flyer is gonna go 200 feet in the air and you're gonna miss that bite when you go over that spot of fish. So here we go, you see my yummy flyer's flying because I let out too much kite. Go ahead and let the 130 fly and it's gonna drop that bait into the water. Now we're gonna let that bait fall out the back a little bit. See that red balloon getting close to the horizon. It's falling. Falling. Okay, I put the 130 in here. Here comes my bait. It's starting to skip. I know where it is because I can see the red balloon, but I can't see the bait completely. I don't know if it's going side to side. I don't know if he's nose diving. So I'm gonna get a pair of binoculars, gyros, or whatever I can find. I'm gonna take a glimpse at that bait. I take a look at it, I need to adjust it. I'll let out the kite a little more to bring the bait higher up out of the water if it's too far back. And vice versa, if it's too high in the air, I'll let the 130 out. Now we're fishing for a tuna. We got our balloon outside the wing. Our kite's looking good. We can see our marker balloon. Our yummy flyer is skipping on the surface. It's not jumping too much. It's not underwater too much. But this is good for right now. But guess what? Dave might have to turn the boat in two or three minutes and the wind will change. There's a spot of fish off the bow. He turns to the port. I got to readjust this. If I leave it out here and he turns into the wind, that bait's going to come out of the water and we're going to be out of strike zone. So I'm sitting back here all day with my binoculars, talking to my captain and making sure that this bait stays in the water because when those fish pop, they pop and you got a couple shots to get them. So here we go, we're making a turn. Everything's looking good. My bait's starting to jump out of the water a little bit. So I'll come over here, drop it out a bit on the turn. The kite looks good. Bait's falling into the water. Lock it up, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm starting to 
starting to see the yummy flyer come out. Okay, our bait looks good. We're pulling into a spot of fish. Here we go, we're in the strike zone. Tight rod's locked up in the lanyard. I'm staying over here watching my bait. Here come the fish. We like to fish our drag around 22 to 24 pounds on strike. And as soon as that fish is hooked, we bump it up to about 32. The most important thing about this marker balloon I could see fish blowing up all day. I could see the fish come up and hit it, but I don't know if he takes it. So what I do, which is really important, is as soon as you see fish blowing up under a yummy fly, you're over here on the rod, ready to whine. You see one blow up, you see two, but you know what? Your red balloon's still hovering there. So what we do is we wait. All of a sudden, I see a blow up, and I see that balloon start tearing down to the water. As soon as that balloon hits the water, I start grinding and strike 22 to 24 pounds. As I feel that fish come tight, start peeling line, Dave will keep the boat forward, and we'll let that fish come tight. In the meantime, I put my angler on the rod, I walk over to the kite rod, and I start reeling in the kite, talking to the captain where the kite's at, because we don't want to get our kite wrapped up in our outriggers or an antenna or anything like that. So communication is key. We get the kite in, we secure it, kite secured, bring our angler over here, and we start fighting the fish. And that's how you deploy the yummy flyer. All right, you guys, we're flying our kite right now. A couple things to look at. You see the angle of the line coming off the rod, off the corner of the boat at a 45 degree angle. That's where we like to have our kite. That's where we get our most bites. So knowing where that is, that's the bite zone. And you want to fish that area as much as you can, but sometimes you won't be able to. And you can see now that my bait's getting a little far back there. Because the, we're taking a tack down the coast, 180 degrees, as Dave said and the wind's shifting a little bit, so I can see my balloons falling behind and my bait's dragging a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take a couple cranks on the rod because I like to have that line coming up the kite around 45 degrees. It starts getting more than that, it starts dragging through the water too much. So watch what happens when I crank this in, maybe 10, 15 feet, how the bait will fly. So now we're gonna let it catch up, but you can see now that it's riding on the tail a little more. It kind of looks like a boat when it's flying right. Taps side to side, wing to wing. This is optimal right now. This is great, but this might be good for the next 10 minutes only before we have to tack again and go against the wind. So you guys, make sure your glasses are on, your binoculars are close, and you want to check this thing as much as you can. You want to get in a, in a rhythm of staring at this thing because all of a sudden you'll start seeing fish come up chasing it, and it's pretty exciting. Nothing beats watching the, the tuna blow up on a yummy flyer.